I'm 43, although I don't look like it. Um, left home at 16. I joined the Navy. I was in the Navy for nine years. Uh, did you just stuff, travel the world, met people, drank beer. I left the Navy in 95. I then joined fire service in Hampshire. Uh, I was in Hampshire for a couple of years. Um, my wife is from Coventry. Um, we met whilst in the Navy. My, my wife's ex-Navy as well. So we moved back here to have a family. I've got two children, 10 and 7. Little cherubs are there. The first life I saved, it was some kittens, funnily enough. It was a, a lot of kittens that were that were, uh, that were in the house. We went up and down the stairs. The house was completely smoke blocked. Um, couldn't see a thing. And every time I walked up downstairs, I'd hear a little whimper and a meow. As I sort of went down the stairs backwards, I fell and found a little kitten. And I nearly stood on him about two or three times. I went up and down the stairs, so uh, it was a bit uh, a bit comical as I, as I brought the kitten out. The, the old, as you'd expect to see in the films, you, you see this this sort of, this persona of somebody saving a life. And I took my took my set off. My hair was still going. I went yeah, and the guys all went, oh, "What do you look like?" That was the first life, not the first human life, but the first life. It was good enough. It was good enough for me. I think the one that sticks in my mind quite a lot is uh, we got turned out to a road traffic accident. Uh, involving a family on a crossing, the family got knocked over on a crossing. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the mother who was pregnant, she died, and uh, one of the children died. That was with her. I remember a young boy uh, we were dealing with on the road. Um, I, remember his, his, I remember his name and everything, and he, was, he told me off for getting his name wrong, uh, which I didn't, it was just my accent. So that, he sort of sticks in my mind quite a lot, and every time I drive past it in Birmingham, so I was thinking that you always remember him. We go out and actively target vulnerable people. All walks of life that, that, that tend to be the ones that need our help more than anybody else. Uh, we, we, run a, we run a program here uh, with the police called Boot Camp, um, which enables uh, youngsters and young adults get back into working. Um, we, we run the Young Firefighters Association here. So stuff like that you don't see, it's the best job in the world. It is, it's, it, even, even for me, I, know, it's, I mean, it's a lonely old place being a station commander, but there's, there's not a day goes by where I think, oh, I can't bother going to work. No one day is the same. No, and when I was on the appliances on the, the trucks themselves, uh, it never got tedious because the bells would go down. The rush, the, the rush you get is just, uh, it, it's, undes it's it, you can't describe it really. Sometimes the jobs can be quite upsetting, and uh, you go home and think, I try, not to, I try not to get too personal. I try not to get, uh, I never revisit a scene just for the sake of it and all that. And it's just, uh, I try to keep it separate. But they can be the tough ones. The thing that sort of makes me glad about what I do and, and, and the realisation that I am doing the right thing is I would say 99% of the guys and girls that I work with because they've got more commitment than any other job I've ever been in. I always feel like I, have to, I, I can't do enough. You can't do enough. You can't do enough to help people. I've always sort of been like that. And as I've got older, I try and do more and more. Um, and this, the, the job I'm in and the role I'm in doesn't get much better in trying to help people. That's the uh, that's the sense of well-being I think that comes with comes with the job. I love it. I absolutely love it.